It's time for AWN interviews. And today we are sitting with uh, the Patriotic Alliance's Deputy President and the newly appointed MMC for Roads and Transport. And of course, I'm talking about none other than uh, Kenny Kunen. And Mr. Kunen, first of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and congratulations on your appointment as MMC. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you for the congratulations. <laughs> now, you, you've just been appointed as, as um, um, an MMC for roads and transport in the city of Johannesburg. Um, I mean, this is after the DA and Popalate were booted from the coalition uh, that was governing. How do you feel? Uh, look, it's a mammoth task, especially when you don't know the insight. Um, but I, 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 I am very excited for the challenge. As you would know that uh, I came out of prison, so I had a minus zero on my CV. And uh, I went through many challenges which I overcame uh, by the grace of God. And this one too is a challenge that I will face with courage and uh, deliver the service to our people. So it's, it's an exciting one. Yeah. It's interesting that you speak of service delivery because I was about to ask you, um, now that you're an MMC, surely there's something that you have to do from the previous person who was in that portfolio. Um, what are some of your main mandates now as, as, as the MMC for transport? Uh, obviously, the mandate of this department is to make sure that uh, public transportation uh, is effective. As you would know that we have Metro bus and BRT also that falls in this department. But uh, then we also have uh, GRA, Joe Roads Agency, which then has to, whose mandate is to maintain the road infrastructure, but also to build new roads, um, to patch potholes. Um, understanding now um, our road infrastructure, I think, we must go beyond portals. We must actually talk about um, rebuilding this road infrastructure. We must actually talk about resurfacing our roads properly. Uh, so yeah, that is the mandate. The city has had about six or seven mayors, uh, which means six or seven mayoral committees in the last three months. Does this not be political instability and uncertainty for, for people that should serve in Johannesburg? From where we are sitting, we are committed to making sure that this coalition uh, lasts until 2026. Uh, even if the ANC and the EFF decide to uh, go back to the discussion of 2022, it won't affect the stability. It will just be the changing of mayors. But the mayor and committees will, will remain the same. Uh, the structure of the municipality will remain the same. It will just be to say, let us now change the mayors. But like I'm saying, uh, from the discussions amongst the political parties, uh, the feeling is that this this arrangement must must go on until uh, 2024. If a mayor is changed within this coalition partnership, it won't affect anything. But if a mayor is changed and the DA Action SA Freedom Front Plus block takes over, that's when things change. So... We, we, we are aligned here. We are committed. Um, look, May is changing over three months. Um, the DA was at the center of these changes because the DA refuses to be an equal partner in a coalition. Democracy to the DA is a first name. In practice, they don't believe in it because in September, all the parties agreed on a principle. The DA rejected that principle like the DA is the boss. So the PA refuses to subject itself to a bus tendency. And uh, now, in January, Action SA came back to the Patriotic Alliance and said, let's go around the table, please. And because of our respect for Action SA, mutual respect we have for each other, we went back. And all the parties again agreed on a principle. The DA alone rejected that principle. So the DA refuses to subject itself to the will of the majority. So it does not respect democracy. Although their name is, is a democratic alliance, I don't know what alliance do they have with democrats when they can't respect democracy in the coalition. So, uh, but that has been corrected. 
all the parties here, the 12 parties are saying, let us resolve our problems without affecting the stability of our coalition. Your party came into the Johannesburg Council because of the DA, one would say. Um, they had to uh, alter their coalition agreement so that the Patriotic Alliance could be welcomed. What changed is this? No, we didn't come in because of the DA. Uh, we came in because we wanted to stabilize a coalition that was based on a minority government. And uh, remember after 2021 elections, our negotiations with the DA broke down because the DA did not agree to our terms. And we went back and stood by the corner there in the opposition. Then the Freedom Front class came back, the DA came back, and they said, guys, we are a, mi a minority government. Uh, if we have to vote for budgets, we are going to have a problem. Can you please? And we looked at what we want vis-a-vis -vis what is in the best interest of the citizens of Johannesburg. And we decided then to say, let us strengthen them. Although they did not give us what we want. In fact, at that time, Freedom Front Plus sacrificed their own uh, mayoral portfolio to give to us to stabilize. So the DA never wants to compromise. The DA never wants to sacrifice. The DA wants to have everything. Uh, in this instance in January, it is the action SA again that is saying we will sacrifice. We will lose out. The DA refused to, to lose out. So uh, what happened was exactly that. After we were in with them in September, Action SA said that, uh, look, DA, you've got the whole Troika. You've got the mayor. You've got the speaker. You've got the chief whip. It's not right. You are in a coalition. You didn't win uh, outright. Let us give the speaker position because there was already a vote of no confidence on the speaker. Let us give the speaker position to the Patriotic Alliance or to the IFP. We then said, no, let's give it to the IFP. Everybody agreed. Freedom Front Plus agreed. Action SA, ourselves, IFP, ACTP. John Stian Hazen was in that meeting. He goes to this FedEx full of right-wing old white men there who then writes a letter back and say, we reject this proposal. Who are they to reject what five parties are agreeing on? And that is why in September we said we cannot subject ourselves to white dominance propensities. We are going to live and teach the DA to understand that communication and respect in a coalition is sacrosanct. They cannot, they cannot behave as if they are a big brother. Having many seats does not make you a big brother. You can have 99 seats. If I put you into power with my one seat, we are equals. Um, right now what's happening in, in Johannesburg is that there's a lot of fight for position, a, a lot of fight for power. Like you mentioned the Troika, that the DA had uh, all the seats in the government on the municipality Troika of Johannesburg. At this point, it seems like the Patriotic Alliance will always side with the highest bidder, which seems now, um, if I could say the ANC or maybe al Jama Tabelo Ahmad was offering you uh, a bigger position or a bigger bite of the cake. And you, deci you decided to, to, to decide with him because of that. Is that how the Patriotic Alliance is moving? No, no. There's no higher bidder. There's respect. Communication and respect. Those are the first sacrosanct principles that we must that we must agree on number two we want portfolios that will assist us to service our people you also have your own fair share of of um disputes with the eff's leader uh uh gs money mommy uh can you just need you uh for calling them a cockroach in the end you're planning to appeal that uh is it something that you're really going for um i will appeal it because Look, the justice system has given us uh, an opportunity to, 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 to go to another court if we are not happy, which means the justice system recognizes that a judge may err, a judge may give, may, may make mistakes. And in this instance, we believe that uh, the judge has erred in his judgment, and therefore we 
believe that another court will arrive at a different conclusion. So that is where we are appealing uh, respectfully. Uh, if you look at the Equality Court, I'm not a lawyer, but I think the principles that guide uh, um, the Equality Court laws in terms of hate speech are very clear that they are based uh, primarily on a group of people. Hate speech is directed at a group of people. I spoke about Malema alone. I did not speak about a group of people. Malema has addressed a group of people called the Boas. And the court said, he said, kill the Boa, kill the farm. The court said it's not hate speech. Malema said about Pravin, kick the dog and the master will come out. The court did not find it as hate speech. So how does saying a person is this insect becomes hate speech? I don't understand. I'm confused. Uh, but I must apologize to that insect, not to Malema. Because that insect handles food. It irritated me on my food. Uh, maybe I should have called him a, a, a dung bin, uh, uh, a dung, what do they call it? A dung beetle. You see, a dung beetle, it is that insect that rolls. Whether it's human or animal, it just rolls because all he does when he stands in front of the camera is to roll out out of his tongue. So maybe I should have called him a dung beetle, which he, which he is, because he insults people. He, he, he spills hate speech. What, what do you even make of him calling your party the organization of ex-convicts? Um, I mean, we can't shy away from the fact that you are an ex-convict yourself. So is uh, uh, the president of your party, Gayton McKenzie. What do you make of him uh, making that statement? You see, uh, some of our members uh, in the leadership were saying, let's take him to court because we have pastors who have never been to prison. We have got ordinary people. We have got law-abiding citizens. We have never committed a crime. We have never even been accused of a crime like him because he stood in front of a court accused of collapsing the old province in Limpopo. He was treated like a criminal. He's still being treated like a criminal. He is standing in front of the courts. He went to fire a rifle. He is now facing that case. So, but what we stand on a dog that is backing you the missing car. Madeleine would not worry himself uh, about PA if PA was not growing. So he realizes that we are a growing party. We are making serious impacts. He's, he's following in our footsteps, footsteps now and saying he also wants to go into government and show what he can do. No, he's following us because he realizes that we are redefining politics. So why worry yourself about a person that hero worships you? A person that, 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 that looks up to you. So he looks up to us. And uh, we, 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 we don't want to worry ourselves about that. There's a lot at stake in this country. Don't you think, to a certain extent, maybe he raises a valid point? I mean, it is something that's on the minds of the residents of Johannesburg, that Kenny Kunene is an ex-convict and he's now uh, an MMC. Uh, and of course, there's that l lack of trust um, because of your past. Can you assure the residents of Johannesburg that there won't be any mischievous dealings, if I can call it that, because looking at the reaction after you are appointed, a lot of people are actually not sure about uh, you as a politician now. I don't know which lot of people. Maybe it's, it's people who have always hated me or looked up to me, but uh, hated themselves. Uh, a lot of people that I've seen are actually motivated. A lot of people that I've seen are actually happy. Um, the same happened when the president of Patriotic Alliance, Gatine McKenzie, was, became the mayor of the Central Karoo. Same thing she said. Today, less than 12 months of, be, of him being the mayor, people, including the media, they are calling him the best mayor in South Africa. That's what they are calling him, because of his deeds. So those who came before us 
those who have been in politics before us, like the Dung, the Dung Beetle, have not proven themselves to society. Some have, have collapsed our country. So what I'm hearing is people say, no, 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 no. We, are, we have seen what moralists, those that we say are moralists, can do. They have destroyed our country. So let us give these ones a chance. We have not grown through political structures. Let's give these ones a chance. We have already seen what Katyn is doing. So let's give Kenya a chance. So uh, criticize me based on my work. Uh, otherwise, the constitution of this country does not deprive me of becoming a counselor and an MMC. It does not. And that is why I went through that process. And they must also remember, we were voted. This patriotic alliance was voted by people who knew that getting McKenzie as the president and Kenuk Nen as the deputy president are from prison. They gave us eight seats in the city of Johannesburg. They, they continue to vote for us. We just won a ward in Kensington, in Cape Town. The DA ran away. The DA does not make mistakes when it comes to registering paperwork. They don't make mistakes. But the DA decided not to register a candidate because they knew that they were going to lose. So it's better when they lose from the outside, but when they lose from the inside. We won a vote on Wednesday in Cape Town. No other party has ever won that vote except the DA and the ANC in the heart of Cape Town. So that is the confidence South Africans have in the leadership of Patriotic Alliance. So those who are saying the things that they are saying, it's, 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 it's unfortunately, uh, I must say to them that uh, the pharmacies are open. Even at the shops, you do get some painkillers. Let them deal with their chest pains and heal themselves. Any, any plans perhaps in the future to take on the mayoral position in the city? No, 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 no. Uh, we, 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 we have a structure. Uh, we are supporting our mayor. Uh, I am the, the premier candidate of the Patriotic Alliance in Kaute, and uh, which is one of the reasons why I took up this uh, task so that I can prove to the people of Johannesburg or, or of Kaute what I can do when I'm in government. You come in as an MMC during one of the probably the most toughest times uh, in Johannesburg where the city's finances are not looking good at all. Um, and council will be deliberating on a 2 billion rand DBSA loan um, to help the city financially. Are you then confident that all these things that you're saying you are going to say, uh, you're going to do when it comes to service delivery uh, within your capacity as transport and roads MMC, are you confident that you'll be able to fulfill them? Uh, I've always said that uh, I don't want to say this is what I'm going to do before I understand what the budget speaks to. Uh, before I understand what are the plans for this financial year. But I'm confident that even under those constraints, we will be able to do more. Uh, I'm calling a press conference in the next week or two where I will then table the vision that I have and how we are going to mitigate some of the things. Uh, so I believe that with the support of the private sector also, uh, with the support of my colleagues and my coalition partners, and with the support of the citizens of the city of Chopek, we will be able to achieve a lot together. Uh, do you have any plans, just before we wrap up, uh, any plans for the Patriotic Alliance when it comes to uh, other provinces outside of Gauteng, taking up uh, big positions in the, in the municipalities? Yeah, look, uh, our plan is very simple. Uh, where, where, wherever there's a coalition, there's a, there's a by-election. And uh, we have got strong candidates that can contest that, those by-elections, even if we don't have members. But we've got strong candidates that the community would r rally behind. We are prepared to put resources behind that particular candidate to contest those elections. I'll make you an example in this of Lachtenberg. When we contested elections in December, when we started to campaign in October, we did not even have one person in that municipality. But uh, in, in the two months that we worked hard, we, we ended up getting two seats. And today we, 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 we have a mayor that is running that particular municipality with a view of turning it around.
it is a collapsed municipality. The whole municipality went on by elections. So that is the plan. In Limpopo, there's by elections that are coming. We are going to contest them. In Brongon Sprite, there's a by election that is coming. We are contesting that by election. So that is the plan uh, as to, uh, in terms of our tapping into municipalities. Ah, just to slip this one in, uh, I mean, you, you are known as the Sushi King, and that picture is forever engraved in the minds of the people you are serving in Johannesburg now. What do you say about that? Are you still the Sushi King? Yes. Uh, you see, um, I was asked by people to assist me, lawyers, to expunge my criminal record for years now. And I have refused because prison is the house that built me and I don't want to run away from it. I embrace that journey and I have grown through that journey. So the label of Sushi King, I have stopped eating sushi of naked women. I enjoy sushi uh, on a plate every now and then at the restaurant. And uh, both the elderly, the young, and uh, the middle, they love calling me Sushi King. So even when I'm 100 years, I'm on my deathbed, they will say our Sushi King is on his deathbed. So I will forever be the Sushi King. There is no king in the world that is called the Sushi King. I'm the only one. Why do you want to change? my kingship, my royal title, my brother. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We were speaking to the Sushi King himself. He's the newly appointed MMC for transport in Johannesburg and the deputy president uh, of the Patriotic Alliance. He has been uh, sitting with us and having a conversation about uh, everything politics related in Johannesburg and nationally. Salute on Spaisani.